And I mentioned a little bit earlier that there are some physical controls that affect everything about security that aren't more perimeter or aren't more depth, that kind of thing. And the first one I want to address certainly is employee awareness. If employees are unaware of physical security, if employees aren't told to not hold doors open for people, if employees are not told to worry about folks creeping around or worry about folks that they see walking out of the building with four laptops or five laptops, especially if they don't know who that employee is, well, that employee awareness is what gets ethical hackers caught. Having someone query or question, hey, why are you walking out with five laptops and I don't think you work here? That kind of thing gets us caught. However, it's uncommon. Employees, generally speaking, are not aware of physical security. So we can usually exploit that and just assume they're not going to get involved. Another aspect is involving law enforcement. So having an understanding that law enforcement could be called at any time. As an ethical hacker, we don't want to get caught. We don't want to go to jail. Uh, true hackers don't obviously want to go to jail. Certainly, you know, they don't want law enforcement engaged. So an important defense there for folks that are defending against this kind of attack is understanding when to involve law enforcement, what the idea of trespassing is. And this isn't about legal definitions here. This is more about understanding when it's time to call the police, when it's not time to call the police. And the folks doing security defense on this side certainly do understand when to call the police and will probably err on the side of, oh, it's trespassing, therefore it's time to call the police. Unless it's an ethical hacking, an authorized ethical hacking attempt, in which case it'll be, I would now call the police, and we document that and move on. Another aspect of, of physical security control certainly is using common sense. So having the defender use common sense to look at, well, maybe I should have this door lock fixed, or maybe I shouldn't prop open this door all weekend, or maybe I should repair this this proximity card sensor. Those are things that I would consider common sense, that most security professionals would consider common sense. Failure of common sense usually indicates that there's some kind of security flaw that we can that we can leverage. So an ethical hacker is always on the lookout for things that they would otherwise miss if they were defending, simply not leaving any vulnerability unexploited, Assu not assuming that that door is locked and actually going and jiggling the lock or, or checking the, pat the deadlock or deadbolt. Maybe that door was left unlocked. Maybe there's a reason, maybe there isn't, but common sense isn't universal. And an ethical hacker will certainly look for lack of common sense or gaps in common sense. And finally, communication. When the defenders, when administrators communicate with each other and, and have that kind of conversation around this server should be dis decommissioned or that machine is in a vulnerable spot, we should lock it down. That's a great security control. Talking about security, communicating about security is absolutely critical to defending. A lot of times as an ethical hacker, I'll find that different system administration people or different security, physical security and logical security folks don't communicate well. They don't actually discuss security controls. Those gaps, when I find them, are easily exploited. More of a he said, she said. Well, he said I could take the server out of the building. Well, she said I could take that server out of the building. And there you go. You're walking out with a server. Many of the security controls that are out there are based on physical security. In fact, many of the security models uh, in commodity operating systems, pretty much all of them, depend on some type of physical defense. Until not very long ago, the adage was, if I can touch the box, I own the box. Now, there are a couple of exceptions to that in, in modern technology, but for the most part, that's still true. If I can actually compromise a system, if I can walk up and touch a server physically, put my finger on a server, that usually indicates that I've got some level of unfettered access to that server and I can probably do things like uh, put a USB key in and run some arbitrary software to compromise it or take a hard drive out and either mirror it or steal it if it's already mirrored. Those are the kinds of physical compromises that I want. I either want to infect the systems or compromise and, and get out with the systems. That kind of physical compromise is absolutely just a, a win for an ethical hacker. There's virtually nothing you can't do if you have unfettered physical access, even for a very, very small amount of time. It only takes 10, maybe 20 seconds to pop in a USB key 
and double click something if a machine is unlocked and no one's watching us. Similarly with USB based or, or, or even PS2 based keyboard sniffers takes us what, five seconds, 10 seconds to pop out a keyboard, put in an intermediate device and put it all back in place. If we have even five or 10 seconds of unfettered, unmonitored access uh, physically to a device, we can attack it. 